So I prepared a video demo going through a few scenarios. Um, if you have any questions while we're going through, I can pause and we can ask questions and then we'll also have uh, at least a half hour at the end of this to go over any other questions you may have. Share. Okay. Uh, the classification where and when in the right, here we go. in this first example we'll look at the classification where and when and where it can be misleading and how that affects the name accuracy so in this example we have a user looking for light rail viewport age is fresh and users right in the middle of the so the first result is International District Chinatown Station. So you need to do a side search to see if this is a light rail. So search the web, Chinatown Station, International District is a light rail station. I also like to primarily use Google, tend to be a little better. And Google also confirms it's a light rail station. You can see a whole bunch of different other places that it's a light rail station. So definitely matches what the user is looking for. It's right next to the user. So the relevance is excellent. In this case, we don't have a navigational result for the query because it is a category query. And category queries generally do not have navigational results because for there to be a navigational result, there needs to be just one result that satisfies the user's intent. Any light rail station nearby is gonna satisfy this user's intent. For a category query to have a navigational result, there needs to be a location modifier. So in this case, if they said, light rail station in Chinatown, then there is a navigation result. There's only one light rail station in Chinatown, and that would be the navigational result. But in this case, they just said light rail, and there's even two light rails near where they're looking. So there is no navigational result. All right, so and then name accuracy. So we can check the name with what it says on the main website, the official website, which would be Sound Transit in this case, International District slash Chinatown Station, International District slash Chinatown. So that part is correct. Here we have the classification subway. That doesn't necessarily match with light rail. Uh, so that might be misleading. I'm not sure. So we can look look up what the definition of a subway is. Not the restaurant, but the actual transit thing. So the subway is a term for an underground rapid transit rail system. Okay, that's pretty broad. So as long as it's rail and underground, that's the subway. So if you look at International District Station, National District Station. Let me go back. Oh uh, yeah, let's look at Google. Looks like it might be underground or under some buildings. And if we look at other, yeah, this goes underground. And we can also look at other stations like the Westlake Station in this line and see that it is underground. So it's not misleading. Parts of this are underground and even the New York subway system is not completely underground. Parts of it go above ground or across a bridge. So even though this isn't maybe the best description, it's not misleading and it's actually accurate. So it should be correct. It's like the example in the guidelines where the, we have the result of Macy's and Macy's is a department store with lots of different departments, including clothes, bedding, houseware, and shoes. 
So calling Macy's a shoe store would be misleading because it's not just a shoe store, it's much more than just a shoe store. Address accuracy, we have Fifth Ave and South Jackson Street. For transit stops, it's pretty common that we don't have like a street number, they tend to be just an intersection. If that is what is on the main website, then that is accurate. So let me go back to the main website. Fifth Ave in South Jackson, Seattle, Washington, 98104. 98104. So that matches perfectly. So address is correct. And then pin, we can zoom in it's right on top of the other pin. So I think that's correct. And we saw that this was an underground station, so it's probably underneath. So I can open that up, switch to satellite view, zoom in. And it looks like it's on a structure with a staircase going down. You can also go into the Google view to take a look. And yep, so it looks like the pin was right on top of this building. And that is where you go down into the light rail. But that bus is in the way. So pin is actually also perfect. In this example, we'll look at the difference between perfect, approximate, and next door. So in this query, we have a user looking for restaurants with a fresh viewport and they're close by, and it looks like they're searching all within the same shopping center. But here, even this map gives us the hint that it's all in the same shopping center. So Again, category query with no location modifier. So it's not a navigational result. And we've got Cypress Coffee Company. And we're looking for a restaurant and it looks like we've got a coffee shop. So they got some food, it would partially satisfy them. But they got sandwiches, they aren't really a restaurant though. They're more of a cafe with some food. Some users might be satisfied, but most aren't gonna be completely satisfied with this. So I, I wouldn't give this an excellent rating. I would probably downgrade it to good or acceptable. Uh, I think both are likely correct. So there are, there are are some gray areas in the judging and even in the entrance exams there are some some examples with two possible correct answers one like this would probably have the possible correct answer that is acceptable and good depending on what you think qualifies as a restaurant i wouldn't be satisfied at all with a query like this so i would lean towards acceptable someone else might think yeah i would go to a cafe like that for a bite to eat and give it a good match. But I say good. And I would downgrade it because of a user intent issue. It's definitely not too far or anything. Uh, name accuracy. Yep, that's correct. address, we need to check their website. So 3080 148th South Ave Southeast, number 113. Yep, and on their site, that's what they have. So address is also correct. But if we zoom in on the map, it looks like the pin is actually in the parking lot. That's not on Cypress Cafe. So since it's in the parking lot, but still within the same property, that should get an approximate rating. Also, let's look at the other result real quick. So we have India Gate Restaurant, and we zoom in here, it looks like it's not actually at India Gate Restaurant. It looks like it's at Teriyaki and more, which is the place next door. 
So your initial instinct might be, well, it's at the business next door, so we'll give it a next door rating. But in this case, since they're on the same property and they actually share the same street number and everything, we give it an approximate rating because it's on the same property. So if they're looking for you know, a store inside an indoor shopping mall, anywhere else in that shopping mall will get in a, or on that property gets an approximate pin. I haven't seen, so far, I haven't seen too many next door pins. So for a result to get a next door pin, they need to be two separate properties, but next to each other on the same street. So let's see if we could find one example. So here we've got higher leaf marijuana and then arrowwood animal. These two would not be, so if we were looking for arrowwood animal hospital and the pin was over here on higher leaf, this would not be a next door rating because it is a, separated by another street, which is a through street that connects other businesses. But now, if we were looking for higher leaf and the pin was on the Starbucks, then it would get a next door rating because they're not part of the same shopping center. You can see here it's separate property, but they're still both on 156th Ave. So that would get the next door rating. In this example, we have the user looking for a street. So I can do a side search here. And it looks like there's only one Ethel Rose Way, which is in Boyd's, Michigan, or at least only one near the user. So this Ethel Rose Way is actually a person's name. Maybe they're looking for an obituary for someone that died close to two decades ago. Or we have this result, which upon further investigation is not a real location. We get this, which brings us to Ethel Rose Way in Boyd's, Maryland. So this truly listing is no good. It's just a bad listing. They pulled their data from somewhere wrong. But since there's only one possible result for this, there is a navigational result for this query. It looks like we've got Ethel Rose Way at this address. I'll just search it. Yep, just the one Ethel Rose Way. So I would say this is a navigational result. No user distance or prominence issue there because it's navigational. Name accuracy. So for street queries, we there's no business, so there's no name to check. The name is spelled right, it's, so we just put NA for name accuracy. And here's the relevant section in the guidelines. The NA rating should be used for all address type results, including residential addresses, streets, and localities. Unlike businesses, POI type results, address types results do not actually have a result name. So we don't have a result name, we just have a street. So we can't rate the name, so we should rate it as NA. Address accuracy, we have Ethel Rose Way in Maryland. We have a zip code here, but this is a really small neighborhood street. So it exists all within one zip code. So including the zip code is still accurate. Uh, sometimes a road stretches across multiple zip codes. In this case, the zip code, would, in that case, the zip code would be wrong. But in this case, it is not because the street fits all within the one zip code. So address is correct. And pin accuracy, it's right on Ethel Rose Way. It just needs to be anywhere on the street for it to be perfect, and it is. So it is perfect. Here's an example to remind you to always do your research. So we have a user searching for burgers, and we have a result of Arby's. Now, if you're not too familiar, that might seem 
right off the bat, like it's an excellent place. Uh, it's fast food. I'm, they compete with McDonald's and Wendy's and all them. So yeah, I'm pretty sure they have burgers, but that's not the case. If you're familiar with Arby's, you might know. But if you go to their menu, I don't see burgers. I see sandwiches, which are close, but it's not a burger. It's not what the user is looking for. So here's their full menu, and there are no burgers on. So this would be a bad match. The user wants a burger, and we're giving them a place that doesn't have any burgers. They would not be satisfied with that at all. And would probably think the search engine is pretty stupid for showing them something that doesn't have burgers when that's all they ask for. All right, so moving on. So we need to check the name accuracy. It's Arby's with a capital A, a parser free S. I believe that's exactly how they do it. Yep. So their name is correct in the classification of it being a restaurant is correct. So even though it's a fast food place, it's still a restaurant. So that's not misleading or inaccurate. They can go grab a bite to eat and sit down. Correct. And then we need to check the address against what they have on their website to make sure it's correct. So 6010 Flamingo Road. Let's check out their locations. Oops. Sixty ten Flamingo Road, Las Vegas. Sixty ten West Flamingo Road, Las Vegas, eight nine one oh three. Eight nine one. Okay, so that's perfect. It's got all the components. Now, pin accuracy. I think it was, yep, the red one. Let's zoom all the way in there. Okay, it's not on the building, it's in the parking lot or on the drive through street. So it's not perfect, but it's not next door, it's still on the property. So it gets an approximate rating. Brian, I see your hands up. Do you have a question? Um, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so would you consider a chicken burger a burger? Probably not, but it can still get like a partial rating. Um, uh, it's pretty a rare, pretty rare thing. Um, so if, so if it was pointing at a, a KFC, for example, a Kentucky Fried Chicken that has chicken burgers, you'd rate that the same as um, you did for uh, the one we just looked at there. For the top Possibly. Burger. Do they call them chicken burgers or are they call chicken sandwiches? Well, up, up here in Canada, they call them chicken burgers or, or chicken sandwiches. You can have them referred to either one. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. In the U.S., I've really never heard chicken burgers before. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we. So yeah, in Canada, definitely. Yeah, that might be a a good match or similar to this rating. So considering this is probably EN underscore US, you would yeah. assume no for this case. Yeah, I would I would lean on the no for US. But yeah, that's a good point. Um, things do change per locale and the colloquialisms and different search terms and intents will change a little bit. Yeah, know, okay. But with cultures. Yeah, good question. Thank you. Thank you. In this example, we'll go over what to do when we come across a business that is now permanently closed. In this example, Wild Rover recently closed, I think like within the last couple of weeks. So it's not completely updated everywhere yet. So again, this is a category query and no location modifier. So there aren't gonna be navigational results. Uh, we're missing the viewport on here, but we can just pretend that it's drawn right around this area. Make things easy and that the user is really close by as well. So we have Wild Rover. Oh. 
the user is looking for a bar, we need to do some research and see if it's a bar. So Wild Rover, it's in Kirkland. Sometimes you need to add a little bit extra information in the search to get it. So, I mean, they call themselves a pub. A pub is synonymous with a bar. So pretty much a pub, brewery, any place that serves alcohol is going to most likely be a good match for this. Pictures, yeah, so there's some beer and stuff. So yeah, this is definitely going to be a good match for a bar. But and I see on their Facebook page, it says they are permanently closed. Bing didn't tell me that though. Bing just says it's closed today and it'll be open tomorrow. But also if I go to Google, so Google tends to be a little bit better with being up to date with local results. They might have, they'll have the most up to date pictures and the most up to date information. That's because it is crowdsourced, unlike Bing, which doesn't have as big of a crowdsource for entering this sort of data. So while in Rover, we can see Google already has the permanently closed tag on it. So it's permanently closed. So we flip this tag, but we still do our best to rate it as if it was still open. So in terms of relevance, it's a bar and it's right where the user's looking, so it should get an excellent match. The name accuracy, we still have their Facebook page up and it does seem to be Wild Rover. Wild Rover, their full name is Wild Rover Irish Pub. But I think they're, let's see what, oh, okay, here's, yeah, their own website's already down, Wild Rover. So Wild Rover Irish Pub, and if we look here, it's Wild Rover Irish Public House, which is, pub is short for a public house. So I'm seeing a few different things. I'm seeing Wild Rover and Wild Rover Irish Public House. So I need to see which one is the one correct. So we're also a little bit unsure. We can look at the street view as well. So let me go back to Google, take a look at their street view. Since they recently closed, the street view has most likely not been updated yet, so we can still use it. Oh yeah, I think I missed that. There we go. Wild Rover. Irish pub and restaurant. In this case, I would name the, the name accuracy as correct since we have Wild Rover and the website is just wildrover.com. And looking at their street view, Wild Rover is the prominent part of the name. But Wild Rover or Irish pub would also be accurate. Also, Irish public house would still be correct. Address accuracy. So we are missing street number should be 111 Central Way, Kirkland, Washington. So we're also missing the locality. So we're missing the street name and locality from this address. So if the address is incorrect, missing street number and locality. Pin accuracy, I think that's correct. Looks like it's at the end unit. And when we were looking at the street view, the pin was on the end unit. So oh, pin is also perfect. In this example, we'll look at when to give the next door pin rating. So here we have a user searching for restaurants. We got the result, Thai Ginger and Factoria. Again, no navigational result because this is a category query and there are many results that fit this category that will satisfy the user's search. So the results Thai Ginger Factoria. Quick search shows us it's a restaurant. So it's exactly what the user is looking for. So relevance, it's right next to the user's pin inside the fresh viewport. So it is excellent. 
the name accuracy. So uh, you need to go onto their main website to be sure, but it looks like their name is Thai Ginger. But it having the location name also is correct. So this is just like the Apple example in the guidelines. So in the guidelines and under name accuracy in section 6.2.1, scroll down a little, uh, the location modifier or affiliations, we have the result name Apple, and then the official name is like Apple Valley Fair. It's missing the location modifier, but on the official website, it's still considered correct. In this case, it's the exact opposite. So we had the location modifier, or just like this Old Navy one. So Old Navy, Bell Isle Station, but the official name is just Old Navy. So we have Factoria in there, but their name is still just Hygiene. But it's still correct. So name accuracy is correct. Address accuracy, 3717 Factoria Boulevard. Uh, let's check on their website locations. This was the Factoria one, Seattle Town Center, Factoria. 3717 Factoria Boulevard, Southeast, Bellevue, Washington, 98006. Okay, this matches perfectly. So address is also correct. Now pin, we can tell pin is already off. Thai Ginger is up here and this is on the 76 gas station. It looks like they might be on the same property, so maybe this gets an approximate rating. We need to hop into Google to take a look. Uh, first clue would be to look at satellite view. And it's really hard to tell. It looks like they might be separate. It also looks like they might be the same, but I don't see any spots where cars can drive between the two. So it looks like it's a separate property. Street view will probably illuminate it for us. Okay. So here's the two properties. So yeah, they are, wait, nope, wrong way. There we go. Yeah, so they're separate properties. So let's okay, zoom out a bit. Yes, yeah, so we have Thai Ginger here. They have their own parking lot. It's completely separate. They're partitioned off. And then you have the gas station next door. Now, one complication is, is you, they must be on the same street and no through streets separating them. If I zoom in, it looks like these might be some separating through streets. But if we go back to the map view, we can see it's not a through street. It's literally just the parking lot of the gas station. So they are not separated by any through streets, any streets or anything. They're just two properties right next door to each other. Now, if this was an actual through street, then yes, these, these two prop or this was a through street, then these two properties could not be next door and the pin would just be wrong but it's not a three street, it's literally just the parking lot. So pin accuracy is next door. Right. This example will demonstrate uh, that we still need to search for real world results and what actual real world density is. The results shown for rating aren't necessarily the closest and only results to the user. So in this case, we have a new a user in New York City in Brooklyn searching for pizza. And here we have three results and they seem pretty spread out and far away. So we have a fresh viewport and the user is pretty close to the viewport. Uh, no, in New York City and pizza, there are a lot more pizza places a lot closer to where this user is. The user is like an East Flatbush neighborhood. So if I were to go on to Google and search pizza in East Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York, 
bet you I'm going to find a lot of results. You get out of get into the normal view. So the user, so I flip back and forth here. User is near this park. So the user is about right over here near the museum. And we can see lots of results that are actually really close to the user. Lots of results here that are really close to the user in the viewport. So again, a category query, no location modifier. There are hundreds of pizza restaurants that would satisfy this user search within, <laughs> within this area. Okay, so we've got Lavella Pizza. Let's see, Lavella Pizza. I probably need to add in a location. Yeah, because I'm getting results all over the place. So let's see, in Brooklyn. This one was at what? 8520920. So this is maybe a chain. See if we get the right one. There we go. A five oh nine twenty, not two oh nine. Okay, so it's a pizza place that serves pizza. It looks like. Okay, so this definitely matches the user's intent, but it's way over here at the very edge of the user's viewport. And. Side research shows that there are much closer results to the user. So because of that, really only results in this central area, this yellow one is even kind of on the line, would get the excellent. A little further out would get a good, and then this far I would give an acceptable rating. It's still within the viewport, but pretty far from the user. User is likely to pick a place much closer. So I would downgrade this one to acceptable, purely because of distance, because there are a lot of results closer to the user and the density is very high. Now, if these were literally, literally the only three pizza places near the user, then this would probably get a good rating, maybe even upgrade it to an acceptable because it's still with, I mean, excellent because it's still within the viewport. But because the result density is so high, this even being on the edge of the viewport is not really good enough and should just get an acceptable rating. A question, please. The yellow would get a, either an excellent, maybe. Yep, I'm ready. What was your question? So, so the guidelines state that when they uh, you dealing with a fresh viewport and they're looking for a business within a fresh viewport and the users outside the viewport, that all results within the fresh viewport get rated excellent. Um, how is this different? Oh, shoot. Yeah, I think I've overshot that rule on this one. Because I got a little confused because he's so close. Let me double check with the guidelines. Yeah, I don't have the number in front of me, but I, I certainly remember that. Yeah, I do. I do rec remember that rule, too. Um, search so if he was inside the fresh viewport yes you down downgrade for distance but outside of it the guide says every single result within the viewport gets excellent that's what the guide says distance Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Everything should be excellent. So if the user was a few blocks in, but still inside the view, then inside the viewport, then this red pin would get down, downgraded to acceptable because of density. Okay, here we go. 
Thanks for catching that. Sure. Get our user inside. So that would be like this example. And then, so like this one, even the number three is excellent because it's within. A good rating, it depends on how strict you are, but I'm, I would lean more towards it getting an excellent rating. Yes. But then any further, from that radius, I would give it a good. So that's assuming that the user is just within on this edge. So a result right here, I would only call it good. Uh, you know, maybe even this one at the, if there was a pizza place next to the shop right pin, that might even be downgraded to a good, but most likely would still stay excellent because it's pretty close to the center of the viewport. Although Although in this circumstance, um, you, you picked out many more pizza places within the fresh viewport that aren't indicated on this graphic here. Yep. Uh, so the closest one to the actual user, if he was in the viewport, would be excellent. The second furthest would be good. The third furthest would be excellent, or sorry, acceptable. Um, way down the corner here, you might even kick that one out, wouldn't you? Yeah, that could be acceptable or even bad. I've seen it go both ways from and like in the client's answers. So um, more, when more. there is like a gray area between like if it should be like good, acceptable, acceptable, bad, they tend to put both those answers as the possible solution. So if you said good or acceptable, you'll still get it right. OK, which is kind of nice. Other projects don't do that. Great, okay, thank you. It's outside the viewport. There are plenty of results in it. It would just get it bad. All right, so that concludes it. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know and we'll answer them. Thank you. All right, so anyone have any other questions or any scenarios that we didn't cover that you would like to go through? I have one more question. Sure. <laughs> Uh, when I went, uh, when I did, did the actual exam, which I did by mistake, um, I, I found myself struggling with the three minute window. Now I know that's just, a, an, a, you know, it's recommended, um, but I certainly took much longer than would be expected with the first time going through it. Um, and I actually ended up doing that test. As I said, I kind of hit the left menu bar and kind of hit the thing without knowing what I was doing and started the test. Uh, my wife was out of out of the house for that day. So I still had to look after dogs and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I ended up taking much longer than, you know, they would expect. Um, how, how stringent are they on the timelines when we go through this thing again tomorrow for that, you know, three minute on average type? So, type thing? Yeah, for the exams, they don't, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can take as long as you want. I think if you spend, well, at some point it'll actually just time out. Sit on it for an hour. Yeah. Um, it would take an hour to do it. Um, but when you get into production, that's that three minute time is what like the um, paper hit is based on. Yeah. So if you're having trouble to do doing it at three minutes, once you get into production, it might be making a little less than you expect. But yeah, but with, I, with I, would like I would. I would. I would still assume the client though would be. And this is an assumption happier taking four minutes and getting it right than taking two minutes and getting it wrong, I would assume. Yeah. 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 They're definitely way more happier with that. And they'll actually flag people going too fast. Two minutes that don't, isn't what they would consider too fast, I don't think. But you know, if someone's spending like 30 seconds on one of these queries, they're probably going to get flagged by the client because that's it's really hard to do. Yeah. All okay. trading in 30 seconds unless it happens to be like the business is closed and there's sort of thing yeah that would make sense yeah yes um but apparently this is a pretty um well-defined throughput once you get into production get some practice everyone seems to be able to do at least it within the three minute window and aren't having problems and if you do get like a query and it just is taking way too long or it, there's no way you could do it in three minutes that's what the release button is for. 
So if the client sees like a lot of people are releasing a bunch of tasks, they're going to pause the task and see what's wrong. So if you know they send us a task with really hard data and it's taken us like six, seven minutes per to to rate it, you know, and we start releasing them, they'll pause it and go in and review that, see what's going on, and make adjustments. I I also I, I also. I'm also assuming since they've reopened this to some of us that they're having trouble getting people through it. Yeah, it's a top one and they're helping us out by letting us give a second extension of attempts. But first they told us it was just one attempt, but they didn't tell us like if someone was really close and we felt they would pass with a little bit of extra instruction that we could give them another attempt. So that's why we started doing that. The second entrance exam always had a second attempt available. Yeah. And then I think if you're able to pass the first two entrance exams, uh, the rest of it will be pretty easy you know, and you're basically in. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow is the last chance to try this again. Is there a, a, a cutoff time tomorrow when this closes? No, um, that's just when we're going to go through and uh, push people on to the next level. You know, we're, we'll still push until we have everyone uh, needed for each locale. We're not going to close anything down. So um, if you pass the entrance exam, the first entrance exam on the 24th, you're probably still going to get pushed through. Okay. And it's more of a deadline to make sure that we're moving through. Since this project is in the pilot phase, we do have some deadlines that we need to meet. Right. So is uh, so is the so for the last attempt, we'll call it um, for the red um, level exam tomorrow is the last time for that. For entrance. Yeah. OK. Yeah. For, our goal is to have everyone that has access to at least attempted once for there. Right. OK, so tomorrow is there any uh, so Eastern time? Um, you know, noon Eastern time, if you start it then, are you fine for time timeline? Oh yeah, basically end of the day. So we're, our, off, our US office is in Seattle area, Redmond near Microsoft. Yeah, you're Pacific time, yeah. Yeah, we're Pacific time. So basically any time by, for the hour end of day, even late end of day is fine. What do you define as late end of day? Midnight. Oh. <laughs> we midnight. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, no need to rush through it. Yeah, well, that was my problem the first time. I just felt rushed and I just wasn't comfortable trying to meet this, you know, time deadline. But it's um, it's nice to know that, you know, if you're going to go over the three minutes, you can, but don't take an hour. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah, like if you take an hour, it might just time out on you and then you hit submit. Yeah. And it just refreshes to the same page again. Yeah, and, la and last question. We're in the middle of a snowstorm right now, uh, like a 40 centimeter snowstorm, which oh. is just under two feet. Um, what happens if we lose our internet connection? Can we get back in or are we done? Yeah. So it should just pick, pretty much pick up right where you left off. Okay. So if you, you know, you need to take a break in the middle of the exam, you can log off and log back in and resume right where you left off. You don't lose an attempt or anything like that. Okay. Okay. okay, that's good to know. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. If not, I'll give you guys back 11 minutes. And I will also share the recording to this video. Uh, meeting in our chat and then once I end this meeting you will also have access to the recording from the chat and teams. One word before we say goodbye uh, and I'm sorry this is uh, Elena I just joined uh, but thank you for all the question Brian I think it was uh, you talking. Uh, I hope that there were other questions and I see uh, that the participation was not very high. We expected more, but we thank all you guys, all the one that uh, came in today. Uh, 
very, very much. Uh, I want to, to share the appreciation for these efforts. Please remember that after planet Mars, which is the red planet, uh, everything is paid. So uh, even if you don't, let's say, arrive to the, our final bonus, which is three weeks uh, ahead, but at least the single hits are paid. So you are almost at the end of this uh, sacrifice. And of course, we want you to arrive to get also our bonus, which is, you know, uh, continuous production for X amount of weeks, whatever we put, you know, to, to, to get the bonus. But please remember that at least you start to make money for each hit that you submit after passing the planet Mars. So please, uh, um, Stay tuned, continue to check the chat. Uh, our project coordinators are very active. They spend a lot of time to check your answers, to provide assistance and to give you results. Er, and you can read the, the previous uh, uh, replies. You can scroll all up in the chat and check uh, if there is something that you wanted to ask, but it was already replied. Maybe you can read the, the reply that was given to X, Y, Z instead of, you know, maybe re-asking twice. Uh, like I said, we are putting a lot of management effort from our side, but sometimes also be patient that we have only two hands, so we can reply only as many um, answers as possible in the same minute. And, and I want this one to be on record uh, also for the people that didn't attend, so at least everybody knows that we appreciate your efforts, but at the same time, uh, also be patient with us. We are trying to give you all the tools to pass. If you succeed, it's our success. Uh, at the same time, we cannot move more than with two hands and two eyes. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Looks like Michael has his hand up. Michael? If you're speaking, we don't hear you, Michael. You can also type in the chat if you'd like. Oh, here we go. Hello, can you hear me now? Or... Yep. Sorry about that. Um, no yeah, I, I just had a quick question about uh, the demotions for distance, specifically when the user is outside of the viewport or the viewport is stale. And, I mean, and the viewport is still because it's kind of a little bit of gray area as far as like, depending on the specific situation, like how how far a distance should should a business or a point of interest be like demoted. So like, say, um, for example, I think I got that was in the email example. It, the guidance said, I guess, or the tip said, uh, demote, like if there's, if like if there would be like one uh, result closer to the user than the one that you're rating, then it would be a demotion, like from excellent to good. And at, like the further out, yeah, like the, 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 the further result, the more results that you pass, like say if you pass two results, going towards the user location, then it would be a demotion towards acceptable. I just wanted some clarification on that. Yeah, so that's a general rule of thumb. And that this is probably like the most difficult part, I think, of getting the distance rating, because it is kind of subjective in a way as well. So it's Depen based from- Depends on, density. Depends on density as well. Yeah, so a bunch of different factors go into play. So density, are they in a rural versus urban environment? Uh, and then also the type of thing they're searching for. So even if they're, if they're searching for something like coffee shops and they're in an area where it's pretty um, sparse for coffee shops, they still might not be willing to travel very far for a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. so like this, this is the example out of the guidelines. Um, they don't really say what query this is for, but as you can see here, the results that are within like the first level removed from the user so are all excellent so if the user went to like any of these three results they don't have to pass by any others these are the three closest to the user 
and then if we go out like another level, these are kind of good because the user has to travel like nearly twice the distance to get to them. Okay. And not necessarily doesn't necessarily need to be twice the distance. It could be just like an extra mile or two. But like for this one, the user kind of has to pass by a much a closer result to get to it. So the user is not likely to pick this result. They would probably pick one of these three depending on where they want to go. But maybe it's nearby something else that they want to visit, so they would may still want to see it. So we give it a good rating. Uh, this one, you know, it, the user ne not, won't necessarily have to pass by any closer results to get directly to it, but there are results that are much closer and are better options, so it gets downgraded to a good. And then this one would be acceptable because there's like two closer results on the same way that are that are actually closer. And then bad because the user is not likely to pass three results that are closer to them just to get to a fourth. I mean, you kind of have to put yourselves in the shoes of the user and think, which results am I most likely to pick as the best? And then also think of like the bad rating as if you were shown that result from the search engine, you would probably think the search engine is not very good. Um, so okay. like if this was Bing, you know, Bing doesn't have such a good reputation for having good local search results. So if you were, you know, trying out Bing for the first time and you were getting these bad results, you probably wouldn't use Bing again. Yeah, right. That's kind of one way to look at that. Then the density also plays a role. So if we go to Pizza in Patton. Yeah, there we go. So let's say users like in Central Park, you can say like right here in Central Park, and they're and they just search pizza. Uh, viewport stale, so viewport doesn't matter. These results probably within here, I would call these excellent. These guys, they're a little further, would get good. Maybe these ones as well, they still might get a good. And then like John's, Capizzi, I would probably start calling those just um, acceptable. Okay. And that's because this is in Manhattan. It's really dense and there's a lot of results here. So like maybe only a quarter mile radius from the user gets the excellent rating. Whereas if this was Seattle or even, you know, Redmond near our office, there is much less pizza places. So if the user was, you know, in down near downtown Redmond, all these would probably get an excellent, maybe the Papa John's up here in the Moz would get the good. But it's a much, uh, and then I know there's a pizza place up here. This would probably also get a good rating because it's still close to the user and there's not nearly too many, there's not that sense of a result. Um, examples like these, uh, you mentioned uh, on the test, there's for relevance, there's certain questions where there's like multiple correct answers where it could be like good or acceptable with, because other, especially with like the, maybe the distance thing, there's a level of subjectivity. This would be examples of, um, I guess, questions where th those would be options, so. Yeah, right. so like mm -hmm. if the user was, let's say like the user was right about here. The Papa John's pizza is not too far away. Um, I can see like it getting an excellent rating as well because Domino's might not be the best choice for someone looking for pizza. They might want a slightly nicer pizza place like Spark Pizza. So like the mod and all those can still prop possibly be excellent. So there is a little bit of a gray area. Um, let's see. Then there are a few examples in the guidelines. I do have another meeting that I have to drop and let uh, Zach and Catherine take over. But I know there are, there are a few 
examples in here where they'll show it can get like a bad or an acceptable rating. And it's typically for like distance where it's really hard to tell if it's close or if there's like an ambiguity in what they're searching for. Okay. Thank you. Here we go. Good acceptable. Here's an example. So they're looking for like Mall of America. And that has like a navigational result. Just it should be the Mall of America. And then the result is, I guess, the train station or bus station next to it. It matches the name, so it is given a good acceptable rating. I probably wouldn't give it a good because I think the intent is pretty strong for the Mall of America. And the user is probably not interested in a bus or a transit station that's nearby. So I would have probably given it a good. But other users might think, well, it matches the name. It could be what they're looking for. It could be helpful to them for finding the Mall of America. And they might give it a good rating. And that's because of what they assume is the user's intent. But it can also be great like that because of distance. It is right on the line of what you would call good or acceptable. OK. All right. So thanks, everyone. Can I can I have one more quick one more question, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, when it comes to the notes um, for for each one, um, you know, if you're if you're rating, you know, good or acceptable or bad, uh, they want some notes in there. Um, number one, how detailed do those notes need to be for the exam purpose? And um, is it important that we short form um, the reference links um, for the exam purpose? So uh, the comments aren't as important for the exam. They, they still need to be there for you to get it correct. Um, but they're not being like checked manually. Once you get into production, though, those comments are looked at and are very important. So it is good to be um, detailed and descriptive of what you're of why you're rating. So if you downgraded something to acceptable, you can say this was downgraded because the users this very loosely matches the user's intent. OK, and, and how and, and how important is it to short form the link, um, the the recommended program, which they sent us for the free version, only gives you a hundred short forms per month. Um, oh, I'll ask them about that. But um, my understanding is 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 only needed when the URL is extremely long. Okay. So if I needed to like share this URL, <laughs> this is very long, a very right. long URL. But like if I was sharing the URL for like I don't know, Caman Pizza. Like, I don't need to shorten that. That's pretty short to begin yeah, with. Right. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. Okay. Yep. All right. I got to go. Um, I think Zach and Catherine are still in here so they can help answer any questions. Thanks, everyone, for joining. And hope to see you on the passing list pretty soon. Thank you so much. Bye bye.